Hola, ich hatte Simon. Here we have Norbert from Poland, uh, Christian from Australia, from Kangaroo English, and Ricky from America, from Bilingue Blogs. And today, sprechen wir on Old English. No gone with the Southern Dale. Um, in this Dale, it shall spell Sejon, and he shall and Sejon what it is. Also, the first sentence. <laughs> Uh, ich habe six und twenty four put on min hus. Ich habe six und twenty four put on min hus. And it's written in the, just for viewers, it's written in the chat so they can see the, the written up version of it. Do we get any clues with these? <laughs> no, you just see it on the screen. <laughs> All right. So I'll, I'll be the first to guess, I suppose. Uh -huh. um, I mean, that word, the the fail, I don't know what that is, but <laughs> to me, it looks like it has 26. I don't know what that is. Fail, 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 fail. Uh, I don't know what that word is, but under my house. That's what I have. 26 something under my house. I, don't, I can't think of anything with that fail thing. Uh, Christian, do you have any ideas? Yeah, Um. well, I, mine is pretty similar. Mine's pretty similar. Although I don't think that it's saying there is. I think it's saying I have. I have six and 20, so it's 26. I have 26 something in my house, but I have no idea what Feo Bhutan is. So I don't know. 26 of something in the house. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, and my yeah. idea, I, I, I just knew that it's a, about I have something. And because I saw the number, I, I just put it down like six and 25 <laughs> just uh i don't i'm not good with 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 numbers uh, and years like i just i have i am six and six 25 maybe there is a different uh, counting system in old okay. english and maybe it's six and 25 means something i'm not sure but ich habe it's it sounds like german I like german yeah ich habe. Yes. Are we are we allowed to maybe because you've given me an idea? Maybe you're right. Maybe maybe this is a person just saying what the time is. Mm. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, because in Spanish, you know, in Spanish you say it is this hour. Um, yes. So maybe it's something that's like you know it it makes you know it makes uh, twenty five past six in my in my house. So, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe it's like at the time. That's a really interesting thought. I, I can I can actually see that <laughs> because I don't know what the fail means. And when him saying 25, that actually sounds like it might make sense. Wouldn't you say I have I have a certain number of years for like your age as well in Spanish? Tengo. Yes. Mm -hmm. In Polish as well, we'll say I have years. Mm -hmm. So Simon, you? what's that? Who was the closest? Um. Nobody. <laughs> it was kind of, kind of Christian again, um, but Ricky was sort of vaguely close as well. Like it, I think it's just the word fell threw everyone off a little bit because yeah. it's not. It is cognate with a modern English word, but it's not the word you'd expect, and it doesn't really sound like it. Um, so it meant I have twenty six cattle outside my house. Um, mm. So mm. six and twenty is twenty six. So they just they just say six and twenty five and twenty. Um, Föch means cattle, but the modern word it's related to is fee, as in like you pay a fee, because they considered cattle and, and, and money to be pretty much interchangeable concepts. So yeah. Föch could be used for cows or, or money. But that's, that's one to sort of throw everybody off a bit. Um, uh -huh. But you had a sort of distinction between the word binan, which meant within, and butan, which meant without, like outside of. So Bhutan mean horse is outside of my house. It's, I think it's really interesting that Ricky noticed immediately that Bhutan was some kind of preposition, right? That he, he yeah, thought he it did, meant yeah. under, but it actually yes. meant outside. But yeah, it makes sense, right? In that position, in the sentence, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. you recognize it immediately. Mm -hmm. as a, and I suppose Spanish, I might be wrong here, but Spanish word order is pretty similar to English word order. It depends, it depends on the situation, but um, in many cases, yes. Mm -hmm. I am kind of embarrassed that I didn't recognize who's like the, as the house. Oh, right. But when I looked at it, I immediately saw Hungarian word hus, which is meat, which is kind ah, of connected okay. to the sentence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it, well, yeah, yeah. 
So that put me off. This, this is an example of how, um, you know, anyone who's trying to learn a second language, a big part of the problem <clears> is them trying to suppress their existing languages, you know, yeah. so that they don't get confused. And this is exactly yeah. what happened to you, right? We saw house, you saw meat. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> and then my brain was like, I can't take it. Like, I and and I just left it out. I just said uh, I, it must be about the age of the person or something. Yes. Uh, but yeah, the fee. It's really interesting. It's, it's such a weird it's, word in English. Of, yeah, it's pronounced very differently in Old English as well. So it's it's a bit of a. This is the second sentence, and it's a more sort of topical one. If that gives you a clue, um, but it's Bezas Eure Honda. To believe on Hal. Bezas Eure Honda to believe on Hal. It's so hard to unhear like native, like a <laughs> current English right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know how everyone else is feeling, but I feel like I have really no idea. Like, um, may, maybe at the end of the sentence, it's something about. You believing, believing all, so like you're believing everything. Um, but the beginning, bed of Ori Honda, I honestly, I can't even, I'm making zero connections right now. Me, Honda sounds like a hand, maybe, maybe assisting, helping to believe. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something like the, the second word. Hour, I mean, if you think of like hours, so like it is a time to do something. Okay. okay. Oh. oh. It's a time to believe in. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> time to help to believe. Uh, yeah, that's that's as far as I got. It's time to do something. Or our hand, our hand, our hand. Yes. Oh, that makes sense too. Mm -hmm. uh, better, I... better, better. Maybe it's better. <laughs> It's the best time, maybe the best time to 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 help everybody or something to help everybody to believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that, like our final answer is it's the best time uh, to help everybody to believe. Is that the right answer? No. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> <I'm not even laughs> <close. laughs> Surprise, Sorry. surprise. <laughs> I think believe on threw everyone off a little bit, um, which I didn't I didn't even think about that when I was writing it, but it's um believe on is to remain. And if if anyone watching speaks a bit of German, that's cognate with the German word bleiben, which means to sort of to stay, to remain. So the sentence was wash your hands to stay healthy. Mm. So it was hands. Health, health, health. To be healthy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So hal is cognate with the modern English word whole, as in to be whole. But that's also related to health, like healthy. So and bathe bathe on is related to the English word bathe. So bathe your hands to remain whole, basically. Uh, it's very interesting that in Hungarian again, uh, eggy shake is health and it means like wholeness. Wholeness oh, as well. Okay. So it seems like it's a theme in many languages. Related, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy, isn't it? How you can have languages that that develop completely in isolation, like they have no, um, you know, they have no like common like proto language, but they develop the same concept because you know we're all humans and we all have the same experiences, and mm -hmm. you know, being whole and being healthy, you know, could could spontaneously develop without having any shared language roots. It's really, really interesting. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I thought of, with, with, the, with the first word, I thought about bathe something, but I'm like, there's no way. Cause I, that's why I was saying I'm trying to unhear the, the modern English. Cause I'm like, <laughs> yeah. there's no way it's talking about bathing something, but no, that makes perfect sense now that, now that you said it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You've got to like, just, it's the, you just don't know which connections are the right ones. That's the, exactly. Yeah. The cognates. Yeah. I think I'm I'm like the same with Spanish because sometimes you hear a word that's related to an English word and you assume it means something, but then it like like it works the other way around as well. Like I had a Spanish friend who thought fabric, the English word, meant factory because yes, uh, okay, yes, <laughs> <laughs> it happens all the time. Yes, um, yeah. So the the third sentence, it's summer, se bloman sin dan her. 
it's summer, se blue in the hair. You know, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if you've, if you've been very tricky here, and the word which clearly should be summer, which must be summer, is not actually summer. It means something different. That's, that's what I'm wondering to myself right now. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking the same thing because it sounds like something that has to do with spring. The whole sentence itself sounds like it has to do with something, you know, with spring. But I'm like, is it sumer? Is it summer? Or is it like to add something like sum, sumar? It's like to add. So, okay. uh, I don't know. It's a capital S. It was a capital S on purpose? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that gives me a clue. Wow. Well, can't you tell us, did they have similar rules about capitalization not rules but standards about capitalizing uh, words in in old english or i wasn't thinking about s- scribal old english much um i have to admit so that's basically how it would be in modern english capitalization wise but that's a good question i just hadn't really thought about that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but actually in german all nouns start with capital letter yeah yeah mm-hmm. so Maybe in Old English. All proper nouns or all nouns? All nouns. All nouns. All nouns, yeah. Wow. What? (laughs) What? What? (laughs) Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Like every every noun starts with a capital in German, yeah. That is interesting. So Sumer is a noun, basically. I will tell you that much. Wow. I had no idea. That's amazing. It sounds very familiar, this sentence. I... I almost feel like I understand it, but the sind on hair, that's something I, I can't really get hair, like hair. You used that before, but I didn't see it written, so I'm not sure. I think, I think that the hair means here, right? Um, and, and, and I don't know if it's just because, because I saw the word summer, it's activated all of the connections in my brain, but but I think that maybe the bloman, and this is a pure guess, is something to do with flowers, right? Flowers blooming. So maybe summer, but then summer's a noun. I don't know. Maybe it's summer. Everything is blooming here. Huh? Thin done. Yeah, I was thinking something similar. I said it's summer, the leaves are, are blooming. I didn't even think about the connection with here, but now that you say it, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so Simon, what's the correct answer? Um, it's summer. The flowers are here. Ah, uh, are oh, here. It's blooming is blooming is, is like for, for for flowers in general. Yeah, blum blumen, and it's the same in um, German. I think blu blumen blumen. I'm I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but but yeah. So the the sindon bit was part of an older copula in Old English. So. The, the copulas we have nowadays, a lot of them are from Old Norse. They're sort of Scandinavian derived. So are, the flowers are here. The word are comes from, ultimately from Old Norse. But the original word would have been sindon in that context. Mm. And it's related to the German word zint. So, um, so se is the article. Yeah, yeah that's the definite mm. article, yeah. Masculine. Because when, as I also speak Spanish, and so when I see that, I think it's a reflexive verb, right? Yeah, no. yeah. That, that's what I was thinking too. I had the same thing, like se blumen, it must be a verb. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a noun and it's an, the article. And in, in the old yeah. English, they had genders, like grammatical genders as well. Yeah, they had, they had three. They had masculine, feminine, neuter. Um, wow. So the definite article was quite complicated. E- even I don't understand all the dative and genitive, like I can never remember. Um, but the, the masculine nominative would say, the feminine was seo and the neuter was that, which is related to the modern word that. Mm. Um, so yeah, gender was a lot more, it was similar to, similar to modern German, maybe a bit more complicated than modern German. But it was a bit of a pain. I wonder when, when, when America, or not America, but when English lost that, because I feel like it helps us to relate to other languages. Whenever somebody tries to learn, let's say a Romance language, they get so caught up with, the, the gender of it but if we would have kept that it would have been easier to, to learn these things yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i'm wondering ricky um if if you feel like maybe i had a little bit of an advantage because i've sort of spent most of my life dealing with british english and maybe some of the pronunciation 
you know, maybe is more similar to British English. Do, do you feel like that that might have helped me? Do you think? That thought did cross my mind because I'm like, how is he guessing some of these, some of these <laughs> things? And like, there was well, the one word, I think you and Norbert got it when you said the, the folk are doing something. And I'm like, folk, where'd you hear folk? Like, <laughs> so it's, it's a completely different, different pronunciation. And, you know, I've watched, um, you know, shows from, from the UK. I've heard, I've heard the accent, but I think this is a completely different one that I haven't really been exposed to. So it's like, yeah, I, th- I think there might be a slight advantage there. Yes. Yeah, because like the the accent to me sometimes like sounds like maybe accents that even now you might hear in England, like maybe a little bit of Welsh, you know, maybe, well, just the West Country in general kind of yeah. has this old yeah. English kind of pirate kind of feeling about it, right? Yes, like like even with, with, the, with the here, the here word, was that like, is that like a current word that you guys kind of kind of say over there? Well, I think I can imagine, right? I think Simon would be better to say, but there are definitely some modern day British accents that would say her, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Sounds kind of Irish <laughs> to me. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bring it over her. Exactly. <laughs> <I'm> Irish. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's, that's it's interesting, the the distinction between the two. But there are, there are American accents that have a, a lot of holdovers from... Um, older English that British accents don't have as well. So it's it's sort of a toss up with what what sentence and what words you get really. Yes. Like, so mm-hmm. American accents tend to have the um roticity. So you'll pronounce an R at the end of a word like car. Um, mm-hmm. whereas most most English accents, although some of them like West Country accents do, most English accents don't uh, British accents I should say don't don't do that anymore. Yeah. Um, whereas they did in old English. Yeah, so actually American English is closer to old English because English in Europe has been evolving faster and the people who, the pioneers who, who went to America, they kept their own kind of the old language. And it, hasn't it, been... it just depends which sort of features you're talking about. So there'll be some, like some parts of the UK, like, um, so the word house, which means house in, in some Geordie accents and a lot of Scottish accents, it sounds very similar to that today, just because certain parts of the great vowel shift in the 1500s didn't happen over there um so it depends what features you're talking about everything has certain all dialects have certain sort of things they've held on to yeah i've, mm-hmm. I've always felt like the the southern accent in the united states was really close to like i don't want to say old like like you know medieval but but closer to to the english from overseas than it is over here yeah, a lot, a lot of people that hear reconstructions of sort of Shakespearean accents, like David Crystal's reconstruction of a Shakespearean accent, mm-hmm. um, say a similar thing. Um, I think the, the best approximation, something, something that would have sounded like a sort of English accent from the 1600s would probably be like a cross between uh, a West Country accent, an Irish accent and a, a Southern US accent. I think that would be a good sort of approximation. That's so interesting. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But yeah. then there would have been regional variation across the country as well, so then people in the north of England would have spoken quite differently as well. Yes. Do they still roll um, R's in, in modern English, like in, in UK English or like Australian English? Because I heard yeah. sometimes you would roll the R. Yeah, a lot of um, Scottish accents and a few northern English accents still still do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are there mm-hmm. any Spanish accents where they don't roll the R? And, and, and Paraguay. They say it more like an American R, like, um, yes, um, like instead of saying yo quiero comer, they'll say yo quiero comer. That's really weird. Yes. That actually happens yeah. in Costa Rica, Costa Rica, uh-huh. también. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's really interesting. When I first heard it, I was like, what did, did a group of English speakers just move there and then think over how to, how to speak the language or something? Yeah. Like. <laughs> It makes no sense, but yes, it does happen sometimes. That is interesting. Can, can, can I say that I suspect that if we hadn't seen these words written down, that it would have we would have basically dropped to like zero percent success. I think, think actually seeing the words really helped a lot. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. But besides the one with with the green de tof. That one, I yeah. think we, 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 would have, we would have got that one like a little bit, but the other ones, yeah. no, no clue. No, I, I think not, not all sentences would have been that difficult. I, I just, I wanted to give you some sort of ones to think about, but I, I might have gone a bit, bit random 
with them. Some some sentences would have been pretty comprehensible, I think. Well, it's it's. But. I think I feel kind of good that if they invent a time machine and I get sent back to to you know to medieval times, perhaps I'll, I'll be able to maybe not speak, but I'll be able to kind of understand. Yeah, you know, and I'll, like to end it more or less. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit. Maybe to get some yeah. some food. Get some cattle, you would some get some cattle. food for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So I do have one question. What what time period was this English from? Most of this would have been from the sort of early Old English period. So, say, maybe seven hundred ish AD. Wow. Um, but a lot of it, a lot of it did, didn't really change much. I mean, there would have been minor changes in pronunciation over the course of the period, but. The main thing I'm thinking of is like words like Sindon, which which changed with Viking influence. So about about 700 AD. Wow, sort of time. that's crazy. We have record of that. <laughs> I think that's the year that my mother-in-law was born. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she doesn't watch this. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> and what year was your mother-in-law born? Let us know in the comments below. But seriously, check out Simon's channel for more Old English content and I will see you in the next video. Bye!